Hi there, Dajia Hao. We are back again with another lesson, and I hope everybody is well, and that staying at home is not a problem. But here we have another English lesson to help you with your English, and it's made up of several parts. I'll tell you in a minute. But have you been practicing English since the last lesson? I hope so. Remember the word plummet. Plummet. This man is plummeting to earth. How about eggs? Sunny side up, please. Mm. Or, excuse me, do you have the time? Now, what would be another way of asking this question? You could say, excuse me, do you know what the time is, please? Or, excuse me, can you tell me the time, please? Good. So, I hope you were practicing writing as well. So today we have several parts to this lesson and I'll try to take it slowly. We have these new words and a middle part to keep up with the times with what's happening with that coronavirus. So firstly these new words, limelight, spotlight, limelight, spotlight, and unprecedented, unprecedented, unprecedented. Well, we'll start off with limelight and spotlight. What do you think they mean? Okay, in the limelight, in the limelight. So in the picture, you can see the spotlight, the spotlight. And the light that's shining, that part, you're in the light. You're in the limelight. But if you're not in the limelight, you're in the dark, in the dark. So, in the limelight actually means in the public attention. In the public, just people, attention. You're in what we call in the public eye. In the public eye. Which is a good thing. Good thing. The spotlight. It's light that shines on one spot. The spotlight's light shines on one spot, the center of attention, the center of attention. Everything else is in the dark and invisible, invisible, not visible. You can't see it. So how do we use these terms in the limelight, in the spotlight, uh, in sentences. Here's an example. Our Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, has certainly been in the limelight recently because of his economic plans. Our Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, has certainly been in the limelight recently because of his economic plans. In the limelight means everybody sees him and he has been special. Okay, secondly, Scott Morrison has been in the spotlight recently 
because of his plans for Australia during the COVID-19 crisis. Crisis is a problem. Scott Morrison has been in the spotlight recently because of his plans for Australia during the COVID-19 crisis. So in the limelight and in the spotlight, uh, very common terms used by the news broadcasts and by anybody. Anybody says uh, something is in the limelight or somebody or something is in the spotlight when it's uh, an important thing that's happening. So Scott Morrison is in the limelight and he is certainly in the spotlight. We see him every day doing something important. In the dark has its own meaning, not just to be in that dark area. In the dark means to not know what is happening. You can keep someone in the dark, not tell people what is happening. And that often happens with the news. For example, in this sentence, this is how we use the phrase in the dark. News reporters on TV tell us what is happening with the pandemic. So we are not kept in the dark. That means so we know everything about the pandemic. News reporters on TV tell us what is happening with the pandemic. So we are not kept in the dark. And that's how you use the phrase in the dark. OK, so that's the expressions I wanted to teach you right from the beginning in the limelight, in the spotlight and just about information and p telling people what's happening or not happening and in the dark. Now, in this time when we have to be very careful where we are going, we need to have available some PPE. PPE. What is PPE? Well, this man is wearing some PPE. PPE equals personal protective equipment. Personal protective equipment. It's what you need to protect yourself for working. Protect yourself things. That's what personal protective equipment means. So he has a hat, he has a mask, and a body suit. A body suit. So personal, personal means yourself. Yourself. Protective, it's an adjective, it comes from the verb to protect. And it means to safeguard, to safeguard. And equipment, I think you all know equipment. Equipment are things that are special for doing a job. Special things for a job. So this equipment protects us. That's what it does. So, you know that... I love lists and with a list to make something and the steps involved, the steps needed to make something. So today I'm going to talk about making a shield or visor and I just happen to have my visor here. I hope you can all hear me with my visor. But uh, So that's my visor. And we will learn English. English. I'm not, I'm not really 
teaching you how to make a visor. I'm teaching you English in how to talk about making something. So these people have made these visors to protect themselves and they're still wearing a mask, a mask. So how do we make this PPE? PPE? Okay, so we'll talk about steps, the steps to making your own PPE. Making a face, face shield. Well, step one, I guess, is copy a design. Copy a design and print it using plastic on a 3D printer. This is my 3D printer and you can see the printer has made the plastic outline. Copy means to make another exactly the same. Get the copy. Design. Design is how something is shaped. How something is shaped. That's the design. And 3D, I think you know 3D, three-dimensional, three-dimensional. Okay, so after this has been printed, you remove it from the printer. We take it off the printer. Then separate the backing from it. To separate means to take apart. Take apart. Take one piece away from the other. Two pieces separate. So we separate them. These are steps. And then we assemble. Assemble. We put together the visor. Visor. Or we put together the shield. Shield. So we get everything needed. We have clear plastic. It's not easy to see. Clear means it's see-through. 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 Transparent. 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 Then we have the frame. The frame. The shield frame. A frame is the holder for the clear plastic. It's just like a window frame. A window frame. It holds glass. And then we have a hole punch. A hole punch. Well, sometimes we cut a hole. But with small holes we use a punch. This is a punch. And then lastly, a marker pen. A marker pen. Now, these are four steps. Four steps. How to assemble the shield. Number one. Firstly, to start with. Remember, we talked about these last year. I love instructions. To start with, punch a hole in the middle, in the middle of the clear plastic. Next, secondly, after that, attach the plastic to the frame. Attach the plastic to the frame. Use the marker pen to mark where to punch the holes. Mark where to punch the holes. And then punch the holes. And lastly, attach the remaining holes. And then, all done. All done. All done. It's finished. Completed. And we have our 
we have our PPE shield. So these instructions are common with anything that have steps. There is a sequence, a sequence, something happens one after the other. Okay, so just to move on, I know this may be a little fast, so much to learn, but here is this second word, unprecedented. One of the commonest words one hears on the news these days is unprecedented, unprecedented. So, you know I like the origins of words. So pre means before, means earlier. For example, a preview, preview, you see something early to see before the normal time. We often preview a movie. Or predict, predict means to say before it happens, to say at an earlier time. Okay, and precede, precede means to go before or in front of, in front of or before. A precedent, a precedent is something that has happened in the past as an example. The verb for making a precedent is to set, to set. So a precedent is something that has happened in the past as an example. Okay, and we set, set a precedent. Okay, this word, let's have a try at making a sentence. I've got an example. The Prime Minister has set a precedent with government spending. The Prime Minister has set a precedent with government spending. That means this has never happened before, such a lot of money being spent. It's never happened before. So this is the first time and so the Prime Minister has set a precedent. Set a precedent. So unprecedented means nothing like this has happened in the past as an example. So every time you listen to the news, they use the word unprecedented, unprecedented. Well, what is unprecedented? Well, the pandemic, coronavirus pandemic is unprecedented. The government spending is unprecedented. So everybody is talking about never experiencing this previously. So the coronavirus pandemic has led to unprecedented actions by the government. Unprecedented actions are things that have never been done before. Things like, things such as, things for example, e.g. social isolation. Social isolation, and ISO means solitary or single. Social distancing, two arms apart. And other things, funding free childcare, funding for your childcare, which is fantastic. So, that finishes off this lesson. It's a very big lesson, but you can study it study it slowly and if you note these words and phrases you will be building your English remember in the limelight in the spotlight and you know use these words if you can and practice them with others and we'll see you in the next lesson